Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is AI behavior tree, the decorator composite node. Let's go ahead and fire up this quick little example. First of all, the composite decorator node is not the same as a composite node. In this case, it's using composite to mean combination or combining, not necessarily of this funky gray composite node. So now that we get that out of the way, what do we use the composite node for? Well, it's useful for giving a little bit of advanced logic, but not necessarily fully complete like a full blueprint. It's mainly intended for you to add decorator nodes together using and, or, and not nodes to create more complex logic. So, like any other decorator, you can add the decorator to a task or to a sequence. Let's add one here. We'll go to the composite, and you're going to see our composite node right here. Now, by default, your composite node has no settings except for the name because the composite node has its own event graph. If we double click on it, we'll now find the event graph. By default, you're only going to have an in result, input for a result, and every composite node needs a result on whether it's true or false. So let's go ahead and look at one that I have set up here. Let me delete the example, and we'll look at this composite node. What I've done here is I've made a simple and check. Is our player set right here? And it's a blackboard node, and it's set to is our player set. And then we have another blackboard node, is our AI enemy set. We and them together and put out the result. You can right click and you'll see all of our normal decorator nodes, including any custom decorator nodes you may have created. And this allows you to do some basic AI. Maybe you have, is your target to follow set? And can you find a path? And then you want to do the and result out. So for example, I've done these two. And like I said, you have logic nodes and not and or. So let's run this and see what happens. If I go ahead and run this example here, what we're going to see is right now I have my player set to something and my AI set to nothing, and therefore that was failing. Now that my AI and my enemy were both set, this was running. Now my AI is back to not set, but of course this is continuing to run because we haven't set an abort condition. So to watch that again, the way I've set this up is at zero seconds, it's going to set the player. At five seconds, it's going to set the player and the AI enemy. And at 10 seconds, it's going to remove the AI enemy. So basically, you have your player finding the enemy and then destroying the enemy. And with our decorator, we have it set up where we need it, both of them to be valid. Once they're both valid, it's going to run. It's going to run any tasks I've set below it. And then once it's invalid, it's supposed to abort. Well, it's supposed, it will become invalid once we've finished any sequences we're running, which is why after 10 seconds, you see it fail back up the chain. And of course, now it's not going to run anymore because we don't have valid player is set and enemy is set. Now, if you notice here, there is no aborting sections on our actual node. Well, those are inside of the composite node itself and on each of the individual settings you have set up. So in our case for a blackboard, we have our normal blackboard notification settings. We have the notify observer on result and value change, and then what aborts. Any other node is going to have the standard ones, like our cooldown here, it will have the observer aborting after a cooldown time. So for our example, we want to abort immediately when the enemy is no longer valid, so we just simply change it. When the result changes for the AI enemy, we absorb abort self. We'll go ahead and save it. We'll go back to our behavior tree. And now if you read it, you can see if the Blackboard player is set and the Blackboard AI enemy is set and the AI enemy is set to abort self, then we're going to go ahead and run this. Now, one thing you may have noticed is sometimes maybe this gets a little bit big. You have the option to show operations here. If you have it checked by default, you'll see this. If you had unchecked, it's going to go ahead and hide it and just leave you the title of what it is. 
So that's something to keep in mind if your nodes are starting to get pretty large. So let's run this again. Now that we've set up the abortion, we'll run it. We're going to find nothing happens because we're no longer, we do not have a valid composite node. We have a valid composite node. It runs. When this becomes invalid, it's going to go ahead and abort because we've set it to abort. And of course, go back up to the top and then continue failing because this is no longer a valid composite node. So that's it. That's what a composite node is good for. You can think of it kind of like your macros and your functions where you're trying to condense things into more compact. I mean, because technically you could do five different blueprint nodes in here with different is set, is not set, and different things like that. Or you could do a simple composite node, combine things together, and then have your desired result. And of course, because it's a composite node, you can go ahead and you could use this in a different section, copy and paste it. You have all of your logic here, so things work out easier. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.